A reading from our epistle text. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. In our gospel text, we have one of the most clear understandings that Christ proclaims to his people. However, it has layers. And each layer obviously goes deeper than the last. But the way that Christ speaks it, especially to his disciples, we understand it in the matter of this life, this current life. You see, well, let me just read from verse 21. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for joy that the human being has been born into the world. So also you have sorrow now, but you will, but I will see you again. Your hearts will rejoice, and no one will take your joy from you. That last sentence there really describes exactly what Christ is saying to his disciples. However, how it applies to us is we have to really take a deep look into it so that we can understand it. In this life, and you've heard me preach this time after time after time, that in this life, you will have pain. You will have sorrow. However, whenever you hear that life is short, it's actually not true. Life is very long. Especially for we who constantly count the days. I think that when, when people say life is short, what they really want to say is go out there and get them. You know, go find yourself uh, what makes you happy, etc., etc. Well, the only person who sees life as short is God. It's God who sees our lives as but a twinkling of an eye or the blinking of his eye. And so in this life, one of the things that makes it so long is sorrow. It's pain. We can see just in our country itself, we can see how the world looks at Christianity. And that sorrow and pain is thrust upon the Christian church, even in our country, the land of the free, let alone other third world and second world countries where you're murdered for your faith. But even in our own country, you can look at the numbers, the stats. 70% of people in the United States are not Christian. They do not confess any Christian faith whatsoever. And 25 to 30 percent of the part that do proclaim themselves to be Christian do not believe in the resurrection, which means they're not Christian either. So we are increasingly becoming a non Christian nation. And it's not surprising. It's not surprising because people believe that. The world and Christianity can't jive together. Well, that's not exactly true. Christ has overcome the world. He did so through his cross. However, also he said that the world would hate us because it hated him first. And all of that is only the attack on your faith. In this country, we have the faithful and we have the pagan and there's no one in between. So, we only talk about 
the sorrow, the persecution that the church itself is under. Just that alone is enough to want to give up. But it definitely makes our lives longer. Now, let's take a look at life and death. In our, or even sickness and health. In our lives, we will have sorrow. We will have pain. We will bury those in whom we love and we will be buried ourselves one day. And so like a woman who is giving birth, she has sorrow as labor comes. And I know that no man will pretend to understand exactly what that means and how that feels. I think that we can all understand that it's not a comfortable situation. A woman's water breaks, rushed to the hospital, labor begins, and so does suffering and pain. Well, so it is with us in this life. We will have sorrow and we will have pain and we will have abandonment issues and we will have all kinds of things that call us away from Christ and even in the midst of Christ, we are under the shadow of the cross. Under the shadow of the cross means that we suffer and we're supposed to confess Christ in the midst of it. But it's so easy to get bogged down into the pain and the sorrow and everything that this life has to give to us and forget about Christ Himself. And yet, in the midst of pain, in the midst of suffering, in the midst of sorrow, we also have to understand that we, on this side of the veil of tears, are in pains of labor. This life in and of itself is labor pains. And so it's not a far leap to say that we are in the midst of giving birth, or having, rather, ourselves be birthed. And yet Peter tells us in our text exactly what we are supposed to do as we are being labored, as we are being birthed. He tells us exactly what we, the Christians, are supposed to do. And he puts it very simply. This is the will of God. That by doing good, you should put to the silence, or put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. I mean, I'm going to read that again. Because again, it is instructions on in how we are supposed to live in the midst of this labor of life. For this is the will of God, that by doing good, you shall put to silence the ignorance of foolish people, living as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. This is our conduct as Christians. This is how we are to deal with one another. It's also how we are to deal with the pagan. We deal with one another by loving one another, forgiving one another, caring for one another, actually being in each other's lives as Christians, exhorting one another, celebrating with one another commiserating with one another, loving each other until the end of the age, because there is an end to the age. And in this life, this long life of sorrow and pain, in this life of labor and sorrow and contractions, we know and we understand that when we are birthed, we will have forgotten all about the sorrow, all about the anguish, 
all about the pain because we will have joy that we have been birthed into eternal life. That we are with Christ. And when we are with Christ in heaven, we will forget all of the sorrow, all of the pain, everything that this life has to offer us in horrible, atrocious atrocities. We will forget the labor. We will forget the contractions. We will forget the sorrow because our eyes will be fixed on Christ. We who have been birthed into Christ's heavenly kingdom. And understand that there is not one relative that has been birthed into heaven that looks down upon you. Why? Because they have better things to look at. They have Christ, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. And so as we are birthed, we, again, we don't, we don't remember the contractions. We don't remember the labor. We don't remember the sorrow. All that we remember is that we have been brought into the world. And this world is not of this world that we're in, but rather the world of eternal life where we join with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven. And we shall sing praises, and we shall sing hymns, and we shall sing psalms over and over and over, because it is our joy, and it is truly meet, right, and salutary that we would love the Lord our God each and every day of our eternal life. We'll forget it. We'll forget all of the pain. Just as those who have gone before you have forgotten the sorrow and the pain of this life. And we will remember. And we will watch Christ Jesus. The Lamb of God who takes away the world. And we will be so fixated on Him that we will have forgotten everything that we believe matter when we see Christ, the crucified, the resurrected, the ascended, and the one who says unto you, you will see me again. Your hearts will rejoice and no one, no one can take away your joy. Thanks be to God. Amen. And now may the peace which surpasses all human understanding keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and forever. Amen. Amen.